Hi guys, I'm Jason from Skullquake, your host. Welcome to episode three. Tonight we have a look at our next two competitors, Jan Paul Ronger and Chris Dokoski. Hi guys, here at Dominators Den with Cedric Doyle. Cedric, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, we're here to look at Paul, who's one of your fighters. Tell us a bit about him for those that don't know. Uh, Paul, Paul Pickstil Ronger, he's a, he's a hell of a guy, a hell of a fighter, and uh, yeah, I think he's going to win this show. And tell us what an average training week is like for Paul. Uh, Paul trains right through the week. Uh, he's a full-time athlete, so he trains morning to night. And for those that haven't seen him fight yet, what can they expect from him? Uh, Paul is super exciting. He's a super exciting guy. He's all-rounded, very good jiu-jitsu, very good Muay Thai boxing, wrestling. So, uh, yeah, he's one of the new breed guys that uh, is super all-rounded. Doesn't come from a traditional martial art background. So, yeah, man, I think this is going to be an exciting show. And tell us how he's developed, obviously coming into the gym the first time to where he is today. Yeah, Paul was, uh, Paul was a shy little boy, but uh, he developed into an amazing fighter and an amazing man as well. And uh, yeah, man, he's just, uh, he, he amazes me every day. Well, there you go, guys. You heard it first from Cedric Doyle. We'll be catching up with him a lot more in the coming weeks. Blessing definitely taking a, a few kicks to start, start us off. But uh, unless you set those things up, they are pretty telegraphed. But uh, let's see where we go from here. There we go. and we've seen this many times before is that the guy that's actually trying to get it in just ties his arms out and gasses his arms and then for the rest of the fight it's, it's, it's done here. for Paul. Well done, Paul. Right, guys, here with Jan Paul. Paul, thanks for joining us. Right, what's up, man? Pleasure to be here. So my first question is, what's up with the nickname, Pixteel? Oh, the nickname, I actually thought I was going to come up first, man. Um, I got it way back when we were still training at Street Kings. And of course, my dad, he used to be a minor all the years. And the thing is, my dad actually drove me right through my life in sports. And when I found MMA, he was the first one on board, first one to tell me I'm going to make it. So... That's a tribute to my dad, man. Got a chip away with the pickaxe. <laughs> and then obviously, tell us your journey up to MMA, where it started and how you got to this point. Yeah, man, it was a oh, whirlwind, whirlwind when I got there. Like, like I said, competing all my life, rugby, athletics, cricket, all that stuff. And then I just got bored of it, man. And then I heard in town, not one week after I quit rugby, I heard about an MMA club uh, opening up in Trigarden. I went to Graceland, found the number, they said the coach's name is Cedric, and I hit him up, man, and just went on training from there. And what's it like co training with Coach Doyle? Oh, man, it's madness, man. Rolling with the Dominator is quite a ride, man. He's it's highly intense, man. You better come to fight. This isn't a game, you know. And uh, I think he roots out all the weakness in you when you start out. It's like, yeah, this ain't a game. You don't play, <laughs> you fight. <laughs> so, yeah. But I enjoy it, man. He's, he's nuts, just as me, same as me, and that's why we're going to go straight to the top, man. And for those that haven't seen you fight, what can they expect from you? Hey, man, I'm always trying to make it exciting, do a weird jumping kick somewhere, or go for a crazy takedown. I just, I want people to enjoy watching me fight, because at the end of the day, that's all that matters, you know. You've got to put on the show for the fans, so that's what I'm all about. And obviously now competing in a knockout style tournament, three, three fights in three months, uh, 
Give us your thoughts on that. Oh man, I grind 24 seven anyway, so this isn't new to me. It's just, yeah, business as usual, man. Wake up every morning, four o'clock sharp, out jogging, CrossFit, training sessions at night with coach. So yeah, man, it's nothing new to me. I'm always in camp anyway. <laughs> And you obviously know the other fighters that you're fighting against in the tournament, or at least most of them. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the other competitors as a whole in this tournament? Hey man, it's a good talent pool. Every single one of these guys are talented, but uh, man, I feel like they don't, they haven't seen the bad side like I have yet, you know. And uh, I feel like my experience, power and just my love for the game is going to carry me all the way through, you know. And then obviously you fought on the card this weekend against, that, against Daniel Duda. You didn't come away with a win on that one, a split decision loss. But uh, you are drawn on the, uh, on, with him in the bracket, so yeah, in the man. tournament. Any, any thoughts on another matchup with him? Oh no, I definitely want to see him again. I'm actually quite sad I didn't get him back in the first round. See, Daniel is just an amazing athlete, man. And big ups to the man. He got me, but all he got me was gas tank, you know. So I'm back in the gym. Harder cardio than ever, harder technique than ever. I'm gonna get him, man. No one way or the other. Perfect. Well, there you heard it from Jan Paul. Stay tuned and we'll see a lot more from him in the coming weeks. Hey guys, what's up? Paul Pixtil Ronger here. Catch me on searching for a scrap at Fightstar. Right, here with Grant Olaf talking about this week's competitors. Grant, so this week we're featuring Jan Paul. Give us your thoughts on the athlete, how you picked him in the show, and his background at Fightstars. So Jan Paul's been around for a while. He, uh, I watched him fight when he was a junior um, at an event called Rise of the Warriors. Um, and he's always been an exciting young talent. Um, lately in, in Fight Stars, he's really he's been racking up the wins. Um, he seems to finish fights. And I think from, from my side, that's what we're looking for as a promoter. We're looking for someone that comes in, finishes a fight and moves on. He's also he's a crowd favorite. Um, he's, a, he's a tall, lanky, got a lot of reach, um, and he's not your normal, average uh, mixed martial art fighter. So I'm expecting big things from this youngster. And obviously you've picked him as one of the seeds for the tournament as well. Any reason for that? Well, he was currently on a three-fight winning streak uh, up until when he fought Daniel. Uh, Daniel was always my number two pick, but I thought what I'd do is I'd give the two guys a, a go at each other. And, uh, well, they actually asked me for that fight for a long time and uh, to see who'd come out. Daniel won on a split decision, um, so Paul's got a lot to do to, uh, to make up for it. I know he's not happy with the way he performed, I know he's not happy with the decision. So, um, you know, let's see. Um, hopefully they meet in the competition and we uh, get a rematch and, and see where it goes. But I would say he's my number three pick for this fight after that fight. And then the second fight we're looking at this week is uh, Chris Dokoski, the Pink Panther. <laughs> he fought his way into the competition. What did you think of his uh, qualifier fight? Yeah, again, he's another massive talent we've got in this country. I mean, he's also a youngster. Um, he's been fighting for a while. He stopped to do his matric exams. Um, then he was injured, but he's come back. He's had two good wins on the Fight Store platform uh, this year. And, uh, you know, he fought for his position, which was, it was quite an intense um, um, evening for the guys that had to fight to, to make the show. And uh, he did really, really well. He fought a tough opponent. And uh, I think uh, also he, he, he likes to fight. He's also not your average fighter. He's not going to come in and, uh, and do what you expect. And uh, this youngster is evolving all the time. One of the big things now, he's joined one of the big gyms, CRT. And I think they're going to improve and, uh, and, and just fine-tune him. And I think he also is looking good for this tournament. And obviously, he just joined CRT before his last fight. So you're expecting some, some big improvements between this one and the next one? I, I don't know about improvements as such. I think fine-tuning. I think if they can fine-tune this youngster. Look, he's got great stand-up. Um, his ground game is pretty solid, as we saw in, uh, at the last event. But I think if they can fine-tune him and, and, and maybe bring some aggression out in, in him, I think you're going to see some finishes from this guy. And for those that haven't seen him before, what can they expect from him? What have you seen that you can push out there to the fans? Again, I think this guy's stand-up is, uh, is really great. Um, and, you know, we don't really see enough of it. Uh, last time he fought, uh, you know, it, 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 it went to the ground and his ground is good. But uh, he's, he's dynamic on his feet, his hands are good, and uh, he, he really looks to finish fights all the, all the time. So. He's also, he's a, he's a youngster. He's got a big future in the sport. 
And then going back to the first fighter of, of, of the week, uh, Jan Paul, what can guys expect from him? Obviously, is a very tall, very lanky bantamweight. What can guys expect from a fighter like that this week? He, he's an exciting fighter because he comes in and he's aggressive and he wants to finish fights and he, he, he's looking. He's, he's, he's got a great nature about himself and he, as I say, he wants to finish that fight. So for him, winning is everything. Um, he's, he's crazy, man. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's going to really, really be a, a good one to follow on the show. And I think he's going to go a long way. I think uh, you're going to see a, a lot of this youngster. And uh, as I say, he's crazy. We went to visit him in Secunda. And it was quite an experiment. So uh, let's see what he brings. But he's also, you know, the guys that are on the show are looking to finish. They're looking to go to the next round. So it's going to be a really exciting, uh, whoever they get matched up against, it's going to be exciting fights. And then obviously the, the two of them come from uh, pretty well-known gyms, being Dominators Den and CRT. Give us a bit of background on the gyms as well, for those that don't know them. Well, Dominators is uh, Cedric Doyle um, out of Secunda, um, and he's been around a while, Cedric. You know, he's, he's got a great record. He's a great coach. Um, he's also linked to XKT, uh, House of Tinkerbell. So they've got good, good partners. They've got strong fighters. And I think uh, it benefits him because he, he, he stays in Secunda, so he gets a bit of uh, individual treatment and then comes through to the, the bigger, bigger gyms uh, during the week and gets extra training. CRT, what can we say about CRT? You know, it's, uh, it's one of the biggest gyms in, in the country, if not the biggest gym in the country. And they are just producing athlete after athlete after athlete. So I think both, both youngsters are on really good hands. And uh, I think we're going to see some fireworks.